you and Ryan, if you haven't checked out Al's Frank, Frank Matthews, Matthews story. Good story, great doc, probably I think the best. I'm not saying just because you're my guy. It is a good doc. It's a good documentary. Well, I worked to um, What happened to Frank Matthews? That's the question the fans all. What's your What's your working theory on what happened to Frank Matthews? Well, I've I've thought of a new. I've have a new. I've added a new wrinkle of possibilities. Uh, he didn't get killed. The feds think he's alive. Like three years ago, when Shorty Buse, who we interviewed in there, who appeared on the Wire, Baltimore legend, when he died, <clears throat> the feds lined the DEA lined. The freeway to the cemetery with Frank Matthews wanted posters. Wow. They do that just to be doing something. They, they, they know he's alive. Wow. So, this is what I, I don't have any information that this is true, but here's yet another possibility. What if there's another federal agency that ran interference so the DEA and the marshals don't somehow, someone, FBI or the CIA. Sounds like CIA kind of shit. Protected him. NSA, CIA, those kind of guys. Because because the CIA, that's that's where you have a separation from everything else where there's no information leak. Because FBI and DEA work together so much, and marshals, they're all kind of the same thing. Right. But... And that's CIA. And listen, uh, when we were interviewing Lou Rice, I mean, we mentioned it's in a documentary, they got a call of a guy that looked just like the aged picture of Frank Matthews, black male, the same age, looked like how he was supposed to look aged, living in Durham, but it wasn't him. They went and interviewed, like they got the guy. And what was weird, I think it's in your doc, they're saying even in Durham right now. People say they see people him. Don't, oh, and people that grew we'll up talk about don't him. like, they like don't. But don't they be, say that means they see him. Yeah, like don't be down here asking yeah. questions about. No, I think that there's a, as likely as anything else, is that some other federal agency ran interference and the only one that can really run interference at that level is the CIA. And because he had too much info to give. Yeah. And he was probably smart enough to protect himself from death. Because they know they'd get rid of him. Right. Like, I'm going to leave these documents to you. Boo, boo, boo. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's I'm not saying thing. that's true, but it's, it's, that's the mob didn't kill him. Mob didn't kill him. He ain't in Africa. <laughs> and what's and he's alive. John Liddy? Liddy? Liddy Jones. Liddy Jones. Didn't know to watch you at the same time that uh, H. Ross Black was representing Eddie Jackson, his partner, who was F. Lee Bailey. Frank Matthews had hired him uh, to represent one of his guys. Out of Body More Murderland. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Jones. Yeah. And who the smallness again of the world at that at that level. Um, Mickey Beckworth, Frank Matthews, number two man, and my dad, Eddie Jackson's number two man. Actually became good friends and all the Did way. Did they ever do business or don't know? Yeah, no, I do know. Oh, okay. Because Mickey had a. This um, was after Frank went away, or this is after they both get out. Oh, so Mickey and No Man met in oh, Atlanta. Oh, in the early eighties. Early eighties, they oh. met. They were doing time together in Atlanta. Is that was that now? Uh, maybe we can we can we can end with a little little fun little story. So your dad was tough. So Ike Atkins has always downplayed his money and all that. But you see, your dad told you that they would be sitting in a cell gambling in the land of USP with. Right, you knew uh, definitely Ike Atkins. Big. What was his partner, John Jackson? Yeah, something like that. Something John, Jackson. John Jackson. That Ike Atkins, John Jackson, his partner, um, Carmen Tremonti. 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 Yeah. Members of the Lucchese family who are... Because at this time, Atlanta is where they sent. There was only like six USPs. Atlanta was one of the places. Because Lewisburg and Atlanta got all the East Coast and Midwest gangsters. Gangsters. So it was a, it was a who's who's roster in Atlanta. Murderers Row, literally. Of late 70s, early 80s, right? Or six, well, some of them guys was in front. I mean, some of Jimmy Hoff was in Lewisburg. It was, it was everybody. Right. And um, no, he was like, Ike Atkinson was handling money. He's, talk, he's telling me stories about Ike Atkinson and them in their cell. With the mob, and these guys got a half a million dollars cash. Nineteen eighty in the U.S. penitentiary. Cash money inside the joint, playing poker. Cell door open. Um, I mean, that's beyond corruption. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And back then, you know, the mob had a lot of influence in the joint. Oh, absolutely. Big Boss Filmworks and Big Boss Books presents Courtney Robert Brown Jr.'s follow-up to the book Motown Mafia. Motown Mafia. Big man on campus. My internship was kind of in, 
how the world of international finance and international criminal activities overlap. Corey Black Sr. wanted Corey to go to school to bring legitimacy to the family, but Corey had other plans. While in college, with the help of his friends and his girlfriend, he starts and grows a successful drug operation. Five minutes later, two agents, well now I, well now I know they were agents, but at the time I see two guys go to the right, another two guys start walking towards me. They stop at my seat and they go, grab your bags, DEA, come with us. Needless to say, uh, this is not the fun part of being an intern. Corey finds himself conflicted with his responsibility to running the family business and his obligation to his college studies. However, he'll have to make things work in his favor if he wants to remain the big man on campus. The names have been changed to protect the guilty and the innocent. I'm taking economics and business 101 and marketing and you know your economic teachers telling you about a business plan and how you get a small business loan and you know it's, it's kind of the hypocrisy of the world because I'm like that ain't how the real world works. <laughs>